hello everyone i hope that you're all doing well so if you're new here i'm shannon and i'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist and i specialize in colored pencils and i've been trying to do a few more draw with me videos on here because i enjoy filming them they're nice and casual and i can just show some progress on the drawings that i'm working on while filming so this is going to be a draw with me video and this is the lovely pet that i'll be drawing today so this is coco the yorkshire terrier and i'm drawing this for a lovely lady called realtor i want to say that's how you pronounce it i'm so bad at pronouncing names but i know that you watch my youtube videos so i thought i would do a draw with me for this portrait and it is um of her family dog and it's present for her mum so yes i thought i would start from scratch today and just begin from the outline and started in colour because i usually do these draw with me videos like part way through the portrait so i thought it'd be interesting to do it from the start instead so i'll just show you the reference picture so this is the gorgeous reference of Coco that I'm working from and as you can see I've just put the outline on here and um, she's asked me to include this little mark on the nose and also a little bit of tongue poking out because that's quite a common trait for Yorkshire Terriers, they like to stick the tongue out so, so she wanted that little characteristic just added in there so that it was more true to Coco. So yeah, this is what I'm working with. I've got a few other photos as well in my camera roll just to look at the different colours and stuff in the fur. I've got this one, so cute. And also this one. So I've got a lot to work with, which is good. I don't always get this much um, information given about the pet. So uh, yeah, this will be a fun one to do. I'm just gonna zoom you in a little bit closer. First things first. I'm using the Saunders Waterford Hot Press Watercolour Paper. I usually use the Fabriano, but I don't like how they've changed it. So trying this one out for a bit. And so far, I do actually prefer it. It's a bit more spongy and like soft than the Fabriano, but it's nice. It's a nice texture. So I'm using the Faber-Castell Polychromos mostly for this. And I always start out with the eyes. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I always use dark colour like dark sepia just to start mapping in the darkest parts of the eye so yeah i hope you're all doing well i got back off my holiday on saturday and i had such a good time it was for my cousin's wedding we went to kafalos in greece had the best time it was so hot oh wow i am not good with hot weather and let me tell you it was so hot but then we got back and it was just as hot here, <laughs> so there was no escape in the heat. But it was so lovely. I had the best time. It's just nice to get away for a little bit. I'm not very good at talking and drawing. I find I have to concentrate for <laughs> stuff like this, but I'll do my best. But yeah, I read some... I read a good book while I was on holiday. I've been reading Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, I think. And so far, it's really good. I'm trying to get into reading more classics. I feel like I'm missing out by not reading classics. So that's what I'm trying to do. This paper is so good. You only have to like slightly touch it and the colour will go on it really easily. I just like to get in all these like little bits where the fur is like sat on top of the eyes and just sort of draw around it a little bit. As you can see, I'm like, I'm hardly pressing on at all. Like I'm literally just touching the paper and it's just going on it so easily. Fabriano used to be like this, but it's not anymore. Which is a shame. Yeah, I've got quite a few commissions on now and I think from here on out I'll probably be quite busy with them because it's sort of getting into that Christmas um, time of year where people are booking in portraits like in advance to make sure that they get they get it in time for Christmas. So yeah, I think it's going to be a busy few months 
And then usually I get to January and I'm like, now what? <laughs> it, it is usually quite quiet in January, February, March time. But that's all right, you just have to find something else to do. I usually work on more tutorials and originals and stuff. So Coco's eyes are quite like dark brown. So I think I'm probably going to use... I'm going to use a base of Burnt Orchid, I think. I'm going to concentrate it so to the bottom bit. There's some like little highlights here. So I'm just going to add it into the bottom. You really don't have to press on hard with this paper. But the only downside is, if you don't press on hard with the base, you can't really use the slice tool, which I do like to use. So, it isn't as easy as the Fabriano to use the slice tool with this paper, which is basically where you just scratch off the top layers of the pencil to reveal like a lighter colour underneath. And it, it's good for doing like little hairs and stuff. So that's the only downside. It's like a little bit of the waterline that I just need to add in here. Okay, I think I need a bit of warm grey one around the left hand side of the eye. There's a bit of like a a lighter colour. I'm just going to blend it in. This is um, a pencil extender by the way. It's just handy for when the pencils are really short. And also I ignore the state of my nails and I need to do them. I was going to do them last night and then I couldn't be bothered. And I'm going to use Ben Umber to start adding a bit more of a brown colour. Just like to work in really sort of gradual layers to build up the colour with coloured pencils. I'm barely even having to touch the paper with this pencil. Do you like it? Just going in these little gaps between the hairs too. Oh gosh, so yesterday uh, my cat went missing. If you've watched any of my vlogs, Charlie, the black fluffy one, the really friendly one, he didn't come home. He, he comes home every morning for his breakfast and then usually he just buggers off out again but he didn't come home, which was really unusual. And you kind of think like, oh, well, maybe he'll come back later. But all day, he just didn't come home. And you start worrying, don't you? You think of like the worst possible outcome. Um, and we, I was looking for him all day. We were just shouting his name. No sign of him. And we'd seen the otters the night before. So... It's always a worry that, like, something might have happened. But in the middle of the night, last night, I left my windows open. And about half twelve, he woke me up, meowing outside. And I could have cried with happiness. I was like, you're here. <laughs> oh, such a relief. I don't know where he were, but it was full of grass seeds. There was a combine harvester um, in the field behind us, like, working all day. So I don't know whether it was in the field and it was scared because of that, or I think it could be likely that he got stuck underneath someone's house or, you know, like in a shed or something. But he was starving when he got back. He went straight for the food. <laughs> we were eating for ages. Bless him. It's just nice to have him back. Such a relief. So this will look weird for a while until I've 
built up the layers, but I might, I might use some cold grey one. Or I might, no, I'll just use warm grey one, just in this like darker part of the eye on the outside. I just don't like to go straight in with a full on like dark colour, I like to have a bit of a base. I'm gonna use the dark sepia. I'm just just gonna start building up that out a bit. Oh, um, I finished that uh, portrait of Brandy, the Bernese that I did in my last draw with me, and the lady who commissioned the drawing said that I could meet her when I go and drop it off because she's actually local she's not far from me so she said that I can meet Brandy so I'm well happy about that I love it when I can meet the dogs and whatnot that I've been drawing so yeah that's really exciting I'm gonna try and get a picture or a video or something hopefully if I'm not too awkward <laughs> It's always awkward, isn't it? Like trying to get pictures or videos when you're meeting somebody in person for the first time. Yeah, that's exciting. Just really trying to take my time with this. It's like a bit of hair there that I'm just going to draw around. There aren't any like really obvious highlights in the picture but I might try and add some in just, I always like to add some highlights in the eyes just to make them look more alive. So I might try and add some in but I'll just do this bottom bit first. Just darken it up a bit more. I just think that the portrait looks more sort of alive and has a bit more character when I use some highlights in there. And the other pictures that um I have do have highlights so I think it would be good to add some in. It's hard with pet portraits because you don't want to sway too far from the picture but you also want to like use a bit of artistic license to improve it if possible because sometimes you'll you'll get people that'll say like oh it's better than the picture like that's, that's why people get them, because they want more than just the picture, so I think it's good to sometimes like try and add a bit of something in if it helps to improve it, as long as it still looks like the pet that you're drawing. Add a bit more burnt umber. I had a comment on one of my videos that was like, oh, why is it take you so long to do like a simple eye? And it's like, I always like to take a longer time on it because I like to build it up really slowly. It helps to prevent any mistakes and it just looks that little bit more realistic if you do it gradually with layers. And I think I am just generally quite slow at drawing anyway. <laughs> I always have been, but... I don't like to rush. I'd rather 
get it right and not have to keep like redoing it or well you can't really redo it anyway but rather than starting again It's not like paint where you can just paint over it. You really have to be careful with coloured pencils. Because once you've messed it up, it's not really any going back. But yeah, if anyone, back to <laughs> what I were reading on holiday, if anyone's got any book recommendations, let me know. I like thrillers, I like... I do like romance, not a lot, but sometimes I can read a romance. I like, just like interesting stories. So I'm, I've bought um, The Picture of Dorian Gray. I think that's like a favorite classic. So I'm gonna try that after I've finished Rebecca. Oh, I also have a horse commission on, which is like the first horse that I've done in about two years, I think. I don't get a lot of horse commissions. I think it's because I don't really have a lot to show. So I'm hoping that once I've done this one, I might get a few more horse commissions. I find that once you draw something, you tend to get a lot of that same sort of thing coming in, which is... Probably because you've shown that you can do it well. Like if I do like a, a Springer Spaniel, I'll get a lot of Springer Spaniels all of a sudden. Or if I do a Labrador, I'll get quite a few Labradors. So yeah, I think that'll be good. I've always wanted to get more into doing horse portraits. And it's a really good reference that I've got, so I'm excited for that one. This is starting to like slowly come together now. I need to darken this bit up. I'm hoping that my phone doesn't run out of space again while I'm filming this. That was so annoying last time. I do really need to get a camera, but they're expensive. I don't I can't afford to get one yet. Eventually I will. This is the thing, you kind of just have to make do with what you've got. So that's what I'll be doing for a while. Till I can afford to get like a really good camera. I mean, I could just I could just film it on my other camera, really. But I like being able to sort of do it from the side like this. I don't know. Maybe I should just film it on my tutorial camera. That would make a lot more sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> I just like to switch it up a little bit. I do a lot of videos from above. Right, I think I need to do this top bit now. It's kind of like a bit brown up here, so I'm going to use that for an ochre. A bit brownie there. And then I'm going to do a little highlight there, I think. And I'm going to 
going to use the cold grey one over this middle bit. Still looks a bit weird at the minute, but it'll look right in the end, I promise. <laughs> Add the brown. Like I should have done a bit there too. There's so many cute cats on holiday. Like so many cats. I felt really sorry for them because I think most of them were like feral. But they just lived on the streets. So on the last night we bought some cat food and just took it round to all the cats that we saw and fed them. They actually turned the nose up at it at first. They were like, mm, I want human food. But in the end they went and ate it. There were just so many kittens and stuff. I just wanted to take them all. I think they get well fed though, like the fact that they weren't that interested in the cat food says that people just feed them like meat and stuff. A bit more cold grey one. And just going around these little like highlights. And I'm going to try and leave one there at the top. Might not look right, but it's worth a go. Rid of it, we'll see. <laughs> Just use a little bit of the brown. It's definitely a slightly different technique for this paper. You have to be a bit more lighter with the touch, like not just pressing on really hard. Maybe that's just me being paranoid that I don't want to like break the paper. I think because I like my drawings to look quite soft though, I think it really does work for me, this paper. If you like to draw quite like, like press on quite hard, like make it look really sharp, maybe it won't be for you. Because it's quite spongy, like it, it dents quite easily, so you wouldn't want to go too hard with it, I don't think. I'm just going to bring this down a bit here. Oh, um, another little update. I hit 60 patrons. Wow, that is just 
unbelievable. I just can't believe it, to be honest. I just, I was really apprehensive to start a Patreon and I'm just so glad that I did now because it's one of the best things that I decided to do. So thank you. If anyone is on my Patreon, thank you so much. Obviously, I don't expect anyone to sign up to it, but the fact that people are is just, I find it just hard to believe. I had quite a few new ones while I was away on holiday, so that was really nice. Um, I think I'm just going to use some of my favourite colour for little bits of highlights in the eyes, like cobalt turquoise. just helps to bring the eye to life, it just makes it pop a little bit. just helps to give that reflection of the sky a little bit more. Do I end up getting rid of that highlight I added in? Hmm. I'm undecided, yeah. I'll add a little bit of black to darken up this outer part. I think I need to darken up this inner part of it as well. I feel like when I went on holiday, as soon as I got there, all of my like sinuses and everything cleared up. My ears went back to normal, I felt great. And then as soon as I got home, I feel like everything swelled up again and I feel like I'm all stuffy. I don't know if I'm just allergic to the UK or <laughs> the countryside, I don't know, but I instantly felt really gross again. I don't know why. I don't know if it's like the aircon on the plane, maybe. I don't know. It's very strange. I don't use too much black because I don't want to smudge it later, but think with eyes it helps to really make them make them pop I keep using that word it's a bit of a weird word to use but you know what I mean it makes them look lifelike don't know about this highlight you know I think I might add a bit more brown I think I need a bit underneath the highlight, I think that's the problem. And I need to darken this out a bit up. Maybe a bit of Burn umber. The good thing about this paper, it doesn't seem to go shiny quite like the Fabriano did. So if you don't like your drawings to get that really shiny sort of look once you've applied quite a few layers, then this this might be for you. I might just put a few eyelashes in it, make it look a bit more realistic. I do quite like that. Okay, and then 
and now I'm going to start on the fur around the eye. So just dabbing my lines away. don't like it to look mucky with my outlines there. But it's nice to see them just a tiny bit. I think I'm going to use Luminance Caran d'Ache Luminance Buff Titanium for the base colour. That's my favourite colour for doing light coloured dogs like this. It just works so well. Have I smudged that pencil in there? That'll do. So it's just like a really pale sort of neutral beige colour, I would say. <laughs> it's just such a good base colour. Kind of like when you don't really know what colour you need, I always use buff titanium. Now it's just like a case of being really careful and not smudging any of these dark bits. Because you can't really go back from it once you've smudged it. So I'm just going very slowly. I actually had a request to do a, a Yorkshire Terrier as a tutorial. I think I've mentioned it before, but I did actually start the outline and everything. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to do something Easter related. So I never actually got around to it. But I suppose in the meantime, this will hopefully be helpful. If anyone wants to draw a Yorkshire Terrier. I think it's mostly the colours and the texture that people probably struggle with. Now is like the tricky bit of what colour do you use to add the fur details in and I always like to use nougat for um, fur like this. I think it's just like the perfect brown colour and I just use it in the darker areas. Start building up fur texture and again I like to do it really slowly just so that I'm not getting anything wrong. You don't want to be like rubbing loads of stuff out and I think for the commission that I did um, the two Yorkshire Terriers that went to Japan I used the Luminance um, Brown Ochre 50% and Brown Ochre 10% so these two colours are great as well for drawing dogs like this and I'm just gonna sort of blend a bit of both along with the nougat just to try and get the colours right. So I use these in like the warmer areas. Might add a bit of nougat here. Just kind of like to go back into the fur to make it look like there's little bits that are like sticking over the eye. I like to make it all soft. I really like this paper. I have been recommended to try the Arches paper as well, so I'll probably give that a go. Next time I order some paper, I might order some more of this Saunders paper. And I might try the Arches, which is, again, it's another hot press watercolour paper. I think no matter what brand I end up going for, I'm always going to be favouring a hot press watercolour paper. 
I just like the texture of it, how soft it is. And I'm going to add a bit of that Brown Orca 50%. And back to that burnt umber, I think I need even more of a dark brown. I always get asked how long something like this would take me to do like the whole thing. It's a really hard question to answer because it varies so much for everything. Probably like anywhere from 16 to 25 hours I don't know I don't I used to time myself but I don't anymore because I'd get obsessive over it and I'd be like oh usually I finish it this quick I need to do it in this amount of time and I just don't like to do it like that because I like to make sure that every portrait has had as much time as it needs without worrying that I've taken longer than I planned to so I don't really time myself anymore I mean, it is good to do it if you're trying to figure out your prices and you want to, like, make sure you're earning a good amount per hour. In that case, it is really good to time yourself and be like, right, usually it takes me about 10 hours or however long. So if I charged this much, I'd be getting this much per hour on average. Obviously, it's never exactly the same, but it just helps you to get, like, a base price to work from. But yeah, it honestly just takes me <laughs> such a varying amount of time depending on what I'm doing. How good the reference is, that's a huge factor. If it's a really bad reference, then it usually takes me so much longer and I get like really stressed out because I'm like, oh, I can't see anything. But if I have a really good reference like this one, then it's a dream, a dream to work from. almost like a bit of a pinky colour in there. I'm not going to do that yet though because I'm just going to do like the basic details. If you're um, new to drawing and you want to like draw animals, one of my top tips is always to follow the direction of the fur to make it look natural. You're always keeping one eye on the drawing, one eye on the picture kind of thing to make sure that you're following it in the right direction. I've actually got a hoodie on today for the first time in weeks. And I'm not going to lie, it feels nice. I'm quite excited for autumn now. I really like spring and I like summer, but you get to a point where it's like, right, it's too hot to do anything. I just want it to be nice and cool again. And I love autumn. I love Halloween. I love everything about it. And it's my birthday in autumn in November. So, yeah. I love it. I'm excited for it now. Oh, I actually um, like to do a tutorial for Halloween. I did a black cat eye tutorial last year. So if you've got any ideas of just like a fun, like small tutorial I could do, maybe like a tarantula, a spider, that'd be cool. Something Halloween-y, just something fun for favourite um, time of year. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say there. Maybe a bat? Mm. I don't know. I think I definitely need this to be darker. I 
that a bit here. So as you can see, something like this takes me <laughs> quite a while, but me personally, I'm all about taking your time and making sure that the outcome is as good as it can be because at the end of the day, you do it once and then your client's going to have that portrait forever. So you want to make sure it's good. It's going to be on the wall forever. Don't like to rush. I'm just quite slow in general. I'm a perfectionist. It's a blessing and a curse, really. Sometimes I probably spend longer than I need to doing something and it doesn't look that much different than if I just did it a bit quicker, I don't know. But yeah, I think you have to like have a good balance between not taking absolutely forever to the point where you hardly ever get anything done and also making sure you take long enough that you've really put your all into it. And I think over time with experience, you learn like what works together, what doesn't, and you can get a bit faster. I mean, I feel like I've got slower. I genuinely think I've got slower, but... I just like to make sure I've put as much into it as I can. I'm actually going to really darken this up with some dark sepia. There's like little random dark hairs in Yorkshire Terrier fur. So I'm just going to try and get those in. Like these ones are really dark. actually mad that I'm already like thinking about Christmas card designs, Halloween videos. Like where's the time gone? I feel like I only I only did last year's like a minute ago. I know it's still summer but it's that time of year where you you've got to start thinking about it. Might have done that a bit too high up. Add a few little bits coming out of the top of the eye. It happened again. My phone storage got full and it cut out and didn't record a lot of my videos. So that's so annoying. I think I do need to just bite the bullet and get a, a camera that I can use for vlogging and like general videos like this. Oh. It was so annoying. I was having a right good chat as well. I can't even remember what I was talking about. I think I was talking about the fact that you have to think about Christmas and stuff already. And it feels like a minute since I last was doing Christmas card designs and Halloween tutorials. And it's just gone so fast this year. Weirdly fast. It's freaking me out. But yeah... I think I might have to uh, dip into my house saving, house deposit saving pot and just get a camera with it because I just can't go on like this, can I? Using my phone and then having half done videos. I mean, I could use my camera for my tutorials, but then when I'm doing vlogs and stuff, I can't do both at the same time. So it would just be handy to have like vlogging camera type thing I don't know I don't know if I'm just being silly thinking of getting one I don't know ah. the thing is I use my phone so much for like videos and pictures of my personal life that when it comes to doing my YouTube and stuff it's already nearly full as it is so 
I don't know. I think I'd just be able to create a lot more easily if I got a camera. Yes, I'm just building up all this fur. I can't even remember what I was talking about. Oh well. No one will ever know. <laughs> longer it's going to let me film. That's more brown here. It's quite hard for her to achieve, like, um, I don't know how you describe this, it's not wiry. Would you say it's wiry? This kind of fur anyway, it's quite hard because it's like, in all sorts of different directions, lots of different colours. It's quite textured, but also quite light at the same time. And light fur is so hard to draw, so, yeah, it is hard to, um, get the right texture for this kind of fur. That's why I just take my time. Best way. But yeah, I think I might, um, I might leave it there soon because I don't want the same thing to happen <laughs> where I'm talking and then it's all gone. And I'm not too far off done with this first bit of the eye, so. Yeah, I won't go too much longer. Bit more burnt umber, I think. I'm gonna press on a little bit harder. leave it there for that video so i hope you've enjoyed this draw with me that got interrupted again hopefully there won't be like that in future i'll make sure that i've got enough space to do the whole video but yeah i hope you've enjoyed this first part of this lovely portrait of coco and i will update with more progress over on my instagram and stuff so yeah head over there if you don't follow me already if you'd like to follow the progress make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and i'll hopefully see you in the next one bye for now